My name is Manny Mendoza, I'm 27, and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I cook with cannabis to promote more awareness and education on the actual plant itself, its medicinal wellness benefits, and our social responsibility to being aware of legalization and the whole subject of cannabis in our society. I love that I'm combining two things that are medicines, two things that are agents for healing in a holistic, plant-based, most natural way. I love that I'm doing that. I'm, I love that I'm doing something that's real for my community that I, you know, I believe because it brings people together. It helps heal in ways that you can't do in just a traditional setting of just talking to somebody. You know, we're, we're breaking down barriers for a lot of future generations and, and other people that, are, that look like us in the black and brown community. We're living out our dreams. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked. The events are, this is like my canvas, my way of everything I just mentioned or, and said about why I do this. This is now the way I can paint that picture and bring these people together. And what I'm trying to do is bring about this advocacy and awareness and provide just a level of awareness and education to everything going on through my perspective and the experience I'm trying to use as a canvas to, to bring my paintings, my creativity to life. And that's by bringing people together with a sense of awareness and education. It's a vibe, like it's a fun time. Like we have some of the best DJs in Chicago in the setting with us in a private location. We have really badass mixologists who makes these insane Insane craft cocktails that are infused with cannabis. And then I work with two other badass chefs. We have a host that controls the crowd and the bud tending and that whole experience. So we try to layer everything with different levels of education, but also fun. It's really about bringing people together so that they understand what this looks like, what this is going to look like, how to normalize cannabis is to do it through dining first because everybody eats, everybody loves to eat, especially in Chicago and in Illinois. It's a world-class food city, so it's really hard to say no to something if it's already involved with something you do every day. We wanted to normalize cannabis through food and show that the two are agents for healing. Respectively, they're both medicines. Um, but when you put them together, now you're creating a more holistic experience that's, you're not just hitting somebody home with the nutrition, but you're also touching the spirituality part of it and how we're all connected to this. And you know, that once we explain that and when people just feel that on their own naturally, the event, the dinner, everybody in that experience, it all starts to like coalesce into just like one solid body of people that they're all just on the same wave, on the same vibe. And that's what we aim for is everybody, even no matter what, they bring to the table or like what kind of ideas they have, you know, whatever backgrounds uh, or views they have, they come with. All of that gets kind of squashed at the table and now we're all at the same level. We're all at the same playing field and we all are starting off on that playing field with something that's connecting us all, which is the food and the wheat. That's what I wanted to like focus in on is how we're like bringing all kinds of people together and now in this platform where they, they can talk about things and we bring about issues that are relevant and important and very much worth taking into consideration since we're gonna legalize this and continue to push this into an industry, you know, we gotta do it in a way that's socially responsible. So I had the idea of doing this in like, they, a year before they started the medical program here. So 2013 is, 2012 is when I finished culinary school and then I was cooking with weed over there with my friends, but that wasn't like, oh, this is gonna be an industry. That was just us normal. And then I came back to Chicago to help a friend open up a restaurant. And the next year, 2013, that's when I wanted to start branching off and doing things that really made me feel like I was doing what I really love. And that's combining food and bringing people together, but wanting to add cannabis to that because I started realizing that there's a gap, there's a deficiency, there's so many people in this city who are in the closet about their cannabis consumption and they feel like they can't be proud of it, they can't talk about it, they can't go out and, and, and do it with anybody else unless it's in an alley or in a car or you know just far away from normal society. That, that kind of irritated me because I was like, so everybody just walking around a hypocrite and you know it's just making things, making matters that are currently bad worse. Um, because now we're continuing to segregate people. This whole city was founded on segregation. Now we're starting to segregate people and their cannabis consumption, and this is a medicine. So it's now like you, you can't come out of the closet for trying to heal yourself 
then like what are we doing to people here? You know, how are we treating mental health and how are we treating inequities in healthcare amongst different demographics of people? How are we treating them if we're segregating them and shaming them for this consumption? And then not long after they legalize it and it's like, oh, we just, we're just gonna forget. Uh, you know, 80 years of, you know, prohibition and stigma and criminalization and marginalization. Like, we're just gonna capitalize on this now and, and turn it into an industry all of a sudden. That really happened because of the hard work of a lot of advocates, but at the same time, what really got it through is that people wanna make money off of this. If that's gonna be the case, then how do we do that together? How do we do that in a way that's equitable for everybody, including people who've been arrested for it, including people with mental health issues, and you know that's, that's a big piece of why we wanna do this, but why we feel like it's important that more people know that. I started cooking very early because I had to. Single parent home, had to learn how to feed myself. My mom would be home for work very late and uh, that turned into something that I was curious in and then I turned, I started enjoying it and then I started feeding my brother and my sister. That helped develop a, a passion for it, a sense of like community and nurturing, also cooking for my friends. Once I started doing that, that's what started to build like a love for and a passion for food and like feeding people specifically. But then I went to culinary school and that's what helped drive my curiosity about food systems and agriculture and where food comes from, who controls it, where people, different cultures lie on that whole distribution chain or supply chain, where they all fall when it comes to agriculture and food. And I realized that where I come from and my background specifically, we're on like the lower end of that supply chain. And those inequities amongst people like me in black and brown communities in Chicago, that's what really piqued my interest in learning about food, where it comes from, who's controlling all of it. Because I learned at a very young age that food is power. and being able to control the food and the understanding about it, just the information is power in and of itself. So if we're being stripped of that power through outside you know, situations and forces, uh, we're controlled by those forces. So that's what really got me into wanting to cook is the social justice aspect of food and food systems, not so much the traditional route of Michelin stars and James Beard awards and you know, all the accolades that come with being a famous, successful celebrity chef. I didn't care about the, I didn't care about those, those aspects of it. They didn't really resonate with me. What resonated with me was the people in my community that were either hungry or violent and violent because they were hungry and they were hungry because they didn't know about or didn't have access to other resources. So there were just deep levels of inequities in like all parts of our lives, not just the food but food was the main one because that's the one where people were starting to you know, join gangs and do really bad things be over because they had to feed themselves and they had to feed their families. So it's kind of like a last resort and that's, that's, I feel like the violence in Chicago stems from a lot of those inequities, especially with food, um, definitely with healthcare as well and housing, but food is one of the biggest things because it's what binds all of us. So that's what really like got me into cooking and wanting to like go to school for it and learn about it, start to communicate these issues with through my cooking across the country. You know, it's, I've always been a cook. I've always had the heart and passion of a chef and wanting to create. I feel like that's where I really thrive in is the creative aspect and process of it. My passion really lies with the why I want to cook and who I'm really trying to reach through my cooking. In 2013, that's when I realized I wanted to do this and the city wasn't caught up yet. If I were to tell anybody that wanted to cook with cannabis, it's like, you're a dumbass, you're a loser, you're a stoner, you should just quit now and find a real job. And I was like, fuck you, that's so stupid because everybody hates their job, so why would I want to do that? <laughs> so I wanted to go to a place that would accept me and California was like, duh, I mean, um, I love food and they have one of the best climates, year-round climates in the whole world. And then I actually happened to have an opportunity to work with a friend who started a company called Suja, it's a cold press organic juice company. So I got to go to work with them in San Diego right at the beginning of that company's evolution and expansion. And it was dubbed to go experience that because I came from behind stove and kitchens to production facility and making thousands, tens of thousands of bottles of juice per day. So that's, you know, it opened my eyes. And then another part of that was it was starting to open my eyes about urban agriculture in San Diego's 
hub for urban agriculture and, or, and uh, local farms all around the whole Southern California. Um, it has like the highest per capita in the whole country. So urban agriculture, remember, it was still such a, a deep part of how I want to personally develop. So I couldn't get that in Chicago. Two things that are very important to me, I couldn't get here at home. And that's anything, any information or knowledge or upward mobility within cannabis. And then urban agriculture and farming, it's not something you do all year round. You only get like a couple months, a few months out of the year, selective year to really grow things. And there's not such a huge push for indoor urban agriculture, or aeroponic or aquaculture. There's not enough of it. There's some people out here who are doing it. Very small scale though. Two things that I really wanted to learn about, cannabis and localizing food, couldn't get here at home. So I wanted to go to farm school and I found a farm school, organic, conventional farming, right on the border of San Diego and Mexico in Tijuana. That's where I started to really develop and grow all my ideas and my ideals and things I believe in. And that came from literally figuring out and learning how to grow food. That's really what I've always wanted to do, but once I started doing it, I'm like, oh shit. Learning how to grow food is very, very relatable to living life as a human here. Like how we go about our emotions, it's like so many parallels with different produce and different plants and how they grow with one another in different mediums. and. It's so connected, everything is so intertwined. And the further away we start to do that as people in society, the more problems we have, the more we realize that, or, or try to think that we're not connected. But when we realize that we're so connected and that we all need to be, live in a symbiotic nature where we're helping one another grow and we're helping fend off pests from different, from one another, we're all keeping each other safe. We're all keeping each other nutrient rich and we're, we're, we're promoting our, our one another's growth. That's how you get the most sustainable and healthiest farm with the healthiest soil and the best crops and plants. And you know, it really thrives when it's all working in unison like nature intended. So the more, that, that have a lot of parallels in my personal philosophy with how I deal with people and work with people and grow with people is, because I got to work on a farm. Working at a dispensary, I'm making a bunch of bomb ass food, I'm growing it too, growing my own weed, you know, starting to do a lot of things I've always wanted to do. And then it came to a point where I'm, I met up with some really dope creatives, came to them with an idea like, hey, I want to start a supper club and just start doing dinners and have them layered with, you know, some, some substance with a why, with intention, with education. We started doing that. That's how Herbal Notes came to go from an idea in 2013 to actually launching it in 2017. So it took some time to take all the steps needed to get to the point that I needed to get to. And that came with the intention of leaving, having to say, I can't be here anymore because it's not giving me what I need to grow. So I had to move, I had to start a whole new life to figure out how to get to that next level. And that's, yeah, something I think that's very valuable to, for a lot of people to take away with is, you know, you, you have that sense of sacrifice to be able to evolve. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna stay that same way, same level, same train of thought, same paradigm forever. But Everything is changing, everything is moving, so there's no way we can continue to grow and succeed by being stagnant and idle. We have to challenge ourselves in the most craziest ways. We have to. <laughs> it's the only way um, because the world is crazy. The world is, is volatile. So, and plants, are, they understand that. They react to every single little thing and the best ones adapt. The best ones know how to thrive and continue to push. And that's why I love cannabis so much, man, for real, because it's one of the best, it's one of the most amazing plants that's ever been gifted to the earth. You know, it's a natural soil remediator, which means it heals the soil, it adds nitrogen and other nutrients back in where other monocrops like wheat and soy and corn only take. Take, 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 absorb, destroy all the fertility in the land. <laughs> just absorb and then put nothing back. That's what a lot of industries have done. But cannabis is one that puts back, you know, click. Like there has to be something to this plant where it's not just helping people, but it's helping nature and the earth in general. So it's something that's been around for millions of years. 
We've only been around for like tens of thousands of years. So like, who are we to be able to dictate anything about this plant that's, that knows more than the, us? And we know that it knows more than us because it's psychoactive and it, it talks to us. Uh, it gives us that high, which we feel like we're high because we're high, but we don't know what that means. But really, it's this plant communicating with us. It's really that plant opening another level of consciousness and awareness. Even though we feel stoned, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that we don't know what's going on and that we're not in control. We just don't know what's going on. And a lot of people also feel paranoia and anxiety from it. A lot of those, I've heard a lot of really awesome theories from very smart people who have said that we feel those feelings because it's really the plant telling us. It's, it's giving us like an alarm like, hey, you need to be doing something else. Something else is going on that's way more urgent than you being high right now. That's where the paranoia and the anxiety really stems from is this alarm system being triggered and that normally wouldn't be triggered because a lot of people like to brush things aside or push it aside and hold it for later and internalize it and not talk about it. But cannabis is one that may forces you to address it. Herbal Notes is gonna continue to do even doper and doper shit with more and more collaborators and, and, and even bigger ones. You know, no matter what, I'm, you know, I'm applying for multiple licenses, but no matter what, we're gonna continue to do really dope things because we're always living, we're perpetually gonna be living our dreams. You know, I can't say that 10 years ago, I would have seen this happening. And we're about to, we, we're stepping into a new, whole new decade. This is the beginning of a whole new decade, a whole new opportunity to be different and do something different and to evolve from a personal level to a local level to a fucking state level. How do we all evolve and try to just at least take one or two steps forward instead of like staying in the past and doing the same old shit. Like it's very tired of living like we're in the 50s when it's 2020. You know, it's crazy. We're in the future now, but you know, we're gonna look back on this and be like, oh, that was cute when we said that. But at least now, you know, when I do that retrospect, I wanna be able to say that I was cognizant of where I was that time and place, and I was intentional with how I wanted to be different and move forward and progress. So that, this is an opportunity for everybody to, to evolve and do something dope and be different and try to bring up the next person with you.